What's really interesting is, and I, I say extraordinary because I think you're all extraordinarily courageous. Uh, Ashik Ali Seti Alivi, Nahuda <coughs> Ramli, yeah. and Ahmad Takyuddin Shariman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, let's start with you, Ashik. Um, you're a chambering student. Uh, so how, and I think this is on everybody's mind, how did you get this position paper? <laughs> uh, I think you've been mischaracterized uh, as whistleblowers because well, we suggested you were in one of these institutions. But, so, uh, can you tell me how you got this uh, position paper? <laughs> I'd rather not answer that. <laughs> why? Tell me why. <laughs> well, um, I think uh, the person who gave me the paper uh, once this her, her he saw her identity to be kept secret um, and so I take my responsibility and if anything is wrong with the paper then I take full responsibility of it right so as far as we know the the papers the acknowledged by the authors of it that this is real mm -hmm. uh, and a genuine uh, representation of what they had put now um, the idea I think uh, again and maybe that you could explain this yep. why did you feel it was necessary to put this paper in the public uh, realm all right, uh, so why is it necessary in the first place, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we are doing this thing uh, that I think uh, none of young active, Malaysian activists have done this before. Uh, basically, some young groups, uh, basically unknown to many of the elite politicians out there, uh, we released this document and we got the discussion going. So basically, uh, this is the second time, I think, uh, that is related with some international convention. The mm -hmm. first one is ICED, which is uh, basically a, a disaster. I said it's a disaster because the government is not doing their job well. So what we are trying to achieve here is we are trying to, to, to spark the discussion. Uh, and and let, let, let's just imagine if, if someone from the politics, someone from the government officials or someone senior, right, uh, leak this document instead of us. So that's basically, uh, I think it will not get so many people involved just like uh, how, how it's happening. Okay, today. but do you think yep. uh, that you could be manipulated? That people yep. could say, oh, these young people are just being used by some hands behind yep. to operating to manipulate you yep. in, in this larger politics. Do you ever fear that? I think the, 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 the main point here is uh, the thing that we are trying to achieve that we want to spark a discussion among the, the, the grassroots among the, 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 you know, the young working adults, the, the adults and the, all the society. Uh, so it's not necessarily we have any position in this matter. So it's important that we are just want to spark this discussion because, uh, for example, the ICED issue, uh, there have not been any engagement. Uh, maybe there are some engagement, but not a realistic one, a practical one. Uh, so we are trying to dis uh, spark this discussion, spark this debate so that uh, most of the Malaysians know what is going. Okay, yeah. so you kind of raise, raise awareness by creating yeah. a deeper discussion <coughs> that's going on. Now, Huda, uh, uh, maybe you could help me understand mm -hmm. who all of you are, because uh, I understand that you're all either recently graduated, and mm -hmm. in your case, you've gone on to a master's or doing a master's in yeah. Arabic uh, studies. Now, um, who are you? I mean, who are you? I know some of your faces, and you know, over time, <laughs> there've been uh, some of you have emerged in the public realm. But you know, uh, in, in in news reports and such. But who are you, Huda? Uh, basically, before I answer your question, I, I need to uh, continue to what uh, Taki said. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, what we saw was um, the discussion about Rome Statute is still going on, uh, despite the government has acceded to the Rome Statute. But the problem is that suddenly mm -hmm. they U turned. And I was wondering where this, like, we were wondering where, where was this coming from, actually. So once we got to know that there is actually a paper uh, presented to the Council of Rulers, I think it's, it is very, uh, I mean, it's very necessary for people to know, and it must go into the, uh, into the debate, because they do not know this, the existence of this paper. So let them, let the uh, academics be uh, accounted publicly, and let them, uh, I mean, be debated among uh, a public. So right. So you felt important. that this paper was the paper that shaped the minds of some of the royals, and mm -hmm. in particular, the Sultan of Johor came out quite strongly against yeah. it. Now, uh, Ashik, um, again, who are you, or do you, are you from a, a particular group of students? Do you represent some position on the political spectrum? Are you pro or anti uh, any group? Um, when we do this, people would label us as uh, pro Pakatan Harapan. Mm -hmm. But I just want to remind that these are the faces which uh, brought Dr. Masli down from UIA. <laughs> so we've got, at that time I was labelled as, we was labelled uh, as uh, pro Amno Machai, Amno this and that. And now we are labelled as uh, pro Pakatan Harapan. So uh, we are the groups previously fought and still fighting for academic freedom. 
uh, for the university, and uh, we were the one who were involved in uh, Masli's, Dr. Masli's uh, appointment as uh, resignation mm -hmm. as. UIA president. Okay, I do want to ask you though. You know, Taki just said that you know you don't have a particular position on the Rome Statute. Is that true? I mean, uh, when you look at the Rome Statute, because I've seen some other reports that suggest that you think uh, you know um, ratifying the Rome Statute. I mean, part of this mm -hmm. uh, being a you know a, a, a member state of this would would actually allow say the MH17 issue to be also yeah, resolved. Yeah. I mean, what do you have a well, the shared position on the Rome Statute? Collectively, I think um, that is why we put on a petition mm -hmm. online because we feel Rome Statute will bring uh, justice to MH17, to 160,000 Rohingyas that is in Malaysia, and to the Palestinian people that we are advocating for, giving money, this and that. So, personally and also collectively, we feel that Rome Statute should be exceeded by the Malaysian government. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to the, the petition later on. I do want to, to ask very quickly, Taki, I mean, mm -hmm. um, in the politics of the day, I mean, what do you think as a young activist, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, young, uh, no activist group has done this before, yep. kind of a leaked position paper and such. <coughs> uh, where, what do you want young people to be able to do? I mean, do you want to be consulted, be brought into the political process and this kind of issue? I think this, this, this thing that we have done is actually, in the spirit of New Malaysia especially, right? Uh, we want, we want uh, the people of Malaysia, especially the young people, to, to know that there is this difference between the old Malaysia and the new Malaysia. The difference, be, uh, the difference being is uh, the old government, whenever there are new policies, whenever they are signing a new uh, treaties or anything, uh, I don't think that many Malaysians know about what's going on. And they, they don't even care. Uh, they don't even uh, uh, want to know about what's going on. They don't. Uh, they don't even be enlightened about what's what's being signed. So I think uh, that's the difference that we are trying to achieve today. Uh, in the spirit of New Malaysia, I think the young people deserve to know better and deserve to engage with the ones who are signing and the ones who are uh, debating about this all these kind of policies in the parliament. They have to engage. They have to do. Uh, we usually say it's town halls and everything, but then you. We don't see the government doing it today. Okay. That, that's what we are trying to propose. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a short break. We'll yeah. be back with more. Stay tuned to Let's Talk. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm sure I couldn't with me, Ashik Ali Seti Alvi, uh, also known Huda Ramli and Amatakudin Shariman. They're all uh, part of a group, larger group, I think nine individual uh, activists, young activists, who uh, expose a position paper to the public that they believe shaped the conversation around uh, the Rome Statute and the International Criminal Court. Now, um, we were talking about the role of young people, and Taki, you, you made some very interesting points that in the new Malaysia, she, people should care. But I want to ask you, Huda, mm. do pe young people, and you're very young, you're, you're <laughs> just doing your master's, so do young people really care? Do they think they have something to say about something like the Rome Statute or the ICC? So basically, the debate or discussion about the Rome state, Statute is actually, I mean, being um, circulated around by young people, I mean, among my friends uh, from, I mean, who have studied international relations, uh, political sciences and whatnot. Um, so basically the discussion has happened among those uh, young scholars and also young people. And what are they saying? What is, what is the so general sense of that? Basically, I need to tell you something with regard to the, um, uh, the executive paper. Um, so basically one of the writers of the paper has actually written an act, I mean, three articles on the paper and basically because of the criticism that he got from, uh, I mean, particularly my friends who are pro, I mean, pro the Rome State uh, accession, basically he toned down the, 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 the narrative of the article with regard to the position of the YDPA in the Rome State. But the problem is that when, when it happens, I mean, because of uh, his executive paper, using the old narrative that he used that is not torn down yet, I mean, brought up to the uh, YDPA. So I think as, a, as someone who knows about this story, I, I mean, I shouldn't keep quiet. So this is what young people have to do. From, this, uh, from the day Masli was appointed as, <clears throat> as the president of UIA, I saw nobody step up and say something about that. Even our prime minister kept quiet about it for a few days. So basically, like, since we know that we cannot keep quiet and why people are keeping, keeping quiet, 
So, like, why should we keep quiet? So okay. This is the role of young people, basically. Okay, so the role of young people is, uh, is to, um, to call things out, yeah. to name things yeah. that are yeah. happening, and not be ashamed of, not, not, to have the courage, courage yeah, right? Yes. Courage. Now, Ashik, I mean, you uh, and your, uh, and Huda, and I, now I, it's all coming out <laughs> the images of you doing your sit ins and stuff. I mean, isn't there a problem? Um, are people, your peers, afraid to do the kinds of things that you guys do? Or is it that they just are too busy with their own lives, they, they're more worried about getting a job, so on and so forth? Well, I think um, the young peoples have been um, raised in such a way that politics is dangerous, politics is dirty. Yeah. We, I, 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 if I talk about politics, what do I get? You know, the same politicians coming up again and again, so why should I even care? What is this Rome set? It was a fall. What is, how is it affecting me? My, my, my fees is still the same. I need to go and take PTPT and stuff. So um, the problem, the, the, the main problem here is that the youths don't know what is happening. And they've raised, they've been raised uh, for, since, we, 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 we've been taught since small that uh, voicing out against the elderly is wrong. You know, this kind of culture that this uh, Malay call it kurang ajar. Your, this culture is wrong. So voicing out has been a fear to most of the youths of Malaysians, I would say. Okay, Taki. Yep. If the government of the day has its way, people who in a couple of years are going to turn 18 are going to yep. be able to vote in the next general election. Now, if, if this is the attitude they have, yep. can they be good voters? I mean, where do we go if this is the general attitude of young yep. people? Uh, I think, in a way, we cannot generalize all the young people. Same, right? So basically, if we open the platform, now basically we don't have the platform for the 18 years old to express their political views, right? So whenever we get them to vote, so at least they have to make a stand. We have to make it compulsory for the 18 year olds to, to make a stand to vote. And I think the solution, it has to go both ways. I mean, uh, it's not just us trying to enlighten the young, but then also for the government to do their part in enlightening the society. Uh, basically, what can, I, what can I tell you is that uh, this government, right? This new government we are having almost one year. Uh, I think that they have been, they have been like like having this problem with coordinating their, their new solutions to the people. Uh, we have seen this with ICER. We have seen this with so many uh, complications between themselves, the ministers. Uh, they seems like they don't have that coordination between them, so they cannot like propagate the message uh, properly <coughs> to the people. And the confusion is, I think, is yeah. just like. But paradoxically, yeah. might that be yeah. a good thing? If when the government is not so coordinated, yeah. mm. it actually creates spaces for people like yourself, for activists to come in and yeah. to be relevant, right? If they get everything right, yeah. then maybe you don't have a role. I mean, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, so we're not going to ask for a role if like, they do yeah, their role, yeah. basically. Because we are doing our... Because for, for mm. us, I, I don't see that we are trying to grab our roles. It's mm. Basically, we are trying to do our job that we see nobody is doing it. Mm. So we step up. And did, and did I think the, the main point is this. <coughs> we voted for, for anyone uh, we think deserves to be the government, and we, des we deserve the best government. So that's why we are still speaking up, we're still voicing out our opinions. So we, st we deserve the best government. Government of the day, it doesn't matter if it's PH or BN, we're still talking what we think. And I would just like to add one thing in regards to your first question why did we leak this paper? And if you remember the announcement from the Prime Minister, look, there's confusion, uh, some people is trying to uh, topple the government. Yep. So then, white flag on, back off. That's not the way. When there's confusion, it is because of you. You will have to come out and solve the confusion. Use your multimedia ministry or whatever to yeah. solve the confusion. But what happened here is just a white flag and that's it. We are done. Rome Statute is under the carpet. And but that it is could it be, could it be that uh, there are a lot of things happening behind closed doors that you are not aware of mm -hmm. uh, that pushed a, a very strong leader like Dr. Mathe into a position of uh, conceding mm -hmm. uh, to, as you put it, rightly put it, confusion and, and as Tunku Razali put it, mischief, right? Tunku, uh, uh, you know, Ritya Udin, rather. Yep. He had said that Tunku this Rizal. was the, the tri uh, triumph of mischief over truth, right? Yes. They shouldn't have backed down. But, okay, so that, that is the situation. What are you guys doing now? I mean, you have this petition going, but are you also generating conversations, you know, among uh, your peers to get them to kind of, like, be invested in this issue, Taki? I think it doesn't matter if, if, if something is decided to, to, to proceed or just, uh, like, like Ashik said, uh, raising the white flag. Because I think the, the most That's important surrender, thing... That's surrender, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. surrender. Uh, so I think the most important thing, if you are not going to sign anything, if you are going to sign anything, uh, regardless of your decision, you still have to reach the people. Yes, you still have true. to engage. Why are you doing it? Why is this better for me as a person living in Malaysia? 
then but then we are still uh, the government is keeping silent just giving some press conference and we are stopping it and that's it there's no pre discussion there's no uh, post, post discussion post result discussion and then there's no engagement at all this is not i think what the first world countries are doing they are doing town halls they are doing some uh, majority surveys you know national wide surveys uh, so I, i don't think the government is doing that kind of thing now right uh, who do, do you think the media is playing um, a, a role in this confusion that the media itself is not uh, taking a leading uh, role in shaping the conversation how do you look at the media Uh, based on what happened to us <laughs> basically <laughs> um i mean we were lucky that i mean we can reach to the media fast and then once we released the paper um the media i mean uh, exposed that uh, publicly <clears throat> uh, soon enough uh with regard to the how media can create conversation i don't think in malaysia we are that advanced i mean not like in i mean the other countries uh, I just give you an example. I mean, the fact that we are not that level in Qatar, for example, that we, Al Jazeera, how they lead the discussion, right? So, yeah, with regard to the media, I don't see. I mean, I don't see media is leading that basically, trying to shape public opinion. What I see is just they are moving. Uh, I mean, according to the politics and according to whoever move in that space, basically. Okay, right. So they're covering uh, press conferences yeah. more than <laughs> the only yeah. investigation. Yeah. I, I think I think Uda can and say more because we're in in a media house right now. <laughs> well, yeah. I, what's interesting is you guys did the investigative <laughs> yeah. journalism. Yeah. 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 If, if if the paper was not leaked, the issue would be dead on Saturday itself. Yep. Yeah. You know, media would not mm. cover up this, and right. because we sent our petition to the media, it was not picked up. Only after the paper is yeah. leaked, then the petition was covered. So you guys are the investigative journalists <laughs> okay. and we'll be back stay tuned to let's talk Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm with Taki Huda and Ashik. They're all uh, activists involved in the exposure of a position paper that went to the Council of Rulers on the Rome Statute and the ICC. And they said some fascinating things just now. Ashik, you said that um, uh, that in fact the petition had gone out before, uh, and, and no media took it up, and no. only because you did this exposure that you actually. found this a position paper that the media took well, interest in well i i need to correct that it is not because i want to make my petition go to the public i leaked it after i put on after we put on our yeah. petition then the paper came to us mm. yeah. right so they yeah. obviously thought that you more than the media were uh, a better source to put this, this yeah. petition yeah. right yeah. and that's a very interesting fact yeah. because often uh, people who leak information leak it to uh to media. the media they yeah. took it to the media they went to you instead uh, very interesting now tell us about the petition so uh just give us a sense of what is in the petition in terms of its uh, statements well uh the petition is directed the first uh, point of uh, we making the petition is because for the justice of the MH17 uh, tra- tragedy victims you know the families the justice is not being served until today and you think that uh ascension to the rome statute will yes definitely either. definitely okay. and second thing is because we have 160000 of rohingya years in our country um which will not which is not well taken care of no citizenship and they should be given justice as well and the third thing um why we put on the petition why icc can help another situation is the situation in palestine you know we've been advocating for it but uh, icc is the best place for us to go as palestine is a member of state and they have already launched a complaint malaysia can join force with them and be of uh, a uh, state party uh, to force icc to bring the perpetrators on justice okay so that's your petition online petition um taki what's the status now in terms of uh the the number of uh, signatures you've got on the petition um before we got in here i think we got around 9.7k yeah okay. uh signatures we targeted so, uh, 10k yeah okay but we've already reached 9.7 okay. so before this one live i think we should have reached that yeah. okay so but our online petitions and i know they're very popular and i no. sign them all mm. the time <laughs> and i confession i sign your petition <laughs> thank you so yeah. much <laughs> i added my voice to your petition uh, but i want to ask you do you think that's sufficient you know online mm. activism has mm. its limits isn't it mm. yep uh basically uh if you look back at the history of online petitions uh, e- even even the latest one i think the biggest one is when uh the terrorism shooting in new zealand right uh, that gain 
massive numbers of uh, signatures, right? Uh, but then uh, it can only gain so many donations to help the victims. So uh, there's not so many things that we can do in terms of justice. Uh, but then for for this online petition, I think we have to look back at what we want to try. To, uh, we want to try to achieve. Uh, basically, we want to get the conversation going. Uh, we want to to make sure that our peers, our young members of the society, uh, they deserve to know what's going on. Uh, not just listening to our prime minister saying that we are turning this off and then we just proceed with another stuff. Uh, we deserve to know more. We deserve to get in the conversation. We deserve to engage with our uh, MPs in the parliament. Uh, what else are you doing? What else are you guys uh, going to sign after this? Uh, I said, uh, and then uh, the, the Rome Statute and all else, uh, are we still going to face this kind of news uh, press conference and then just being shocked over and over again over the years? And so yeah. you are going to do some engagement with uh, MPs? Um, well, well, the government of the day have not yeah. approached us till today. Um, yep. We don't see any initiative for them to continue the Rome Statute. Yep. And I think it is also because of the, um, the announcement from Suhakam about the disappearance of Pasako and uh, Amri. Yeah, thing, yeah. Um, because forced disappearance is a crime but, under yeah. the ICC. And I don't know if this is a position taken by the government because it was only made the announcement last week mm -hmm. and then they decided, okay, if we sign this, we will get into trouble because the police force is under us. So. Right. But, of course, under the Rome Statute, it's a failure to take up an inquiry into yeah. that thing yeah. that that will lead to yes. uh, the ICC. So I don't right? know whether that so, is becoming yeah. a So it does become pressure. It becomes yeah. pressure yeah. for governments to act in the best interest and yeah. to conduct themselves at uh, international standards, right? Yes. That is the thing. Okay, uh, Huda, I mean, what would you like to see in the mm -hmm. next, in the coming months? What kind of engagements uh, with public officials or with the public? Are you, do you have any concrete plans, forums and such? So basically, um, our target right now, we are trying to uh, collaborate with academics to have a public debate, public forum, uh, to enlighten people and to engage, uh, I mean, public about this. Um, but the thing is that what's more important to me is when I see the Rome Statute, okay, with regard to ICED, I know it has some controversies and also there, there is a reper repercussion to the issues of Malay rights and whatnot. But for me, seeing Rome Statute, I think I don't see any, I mean, there is no vested interest that's supposed to be yeah. entertained because Rome Statute is gen generally, I mean, talk about genocide and whatnot and it's, it's really talking about crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. So, like, as a human being, as a human being with a common sense, then why shouldn't we sign it? So basically what I see uh, uh, Rome Statute is, it is very academic uh, discussion. So I want the academics to engage uh, the public and also academics to, uh, I mean, to, to, to debate the, uh, I mean, the, the academics who present this paper in front of the Council of Rulers and they be counted publicly. This is what I want from them. So in the meantime, yeah. This okay, and do. finally, in the minute that we have left, Ashik, what do you, um, how do people follow you? You're a, what uh, the Indonesians love to call an organisasi tanpa bentuk, which is like this, you know, it's like an amorphous <laughs> movement of people. Fluid so, OTB. So, what, what, what do you guys, how do we find out what you guys are doing? And is, do you have a Facebook page? Or is there some way that you communicate with the public? Well, um, we do not have a page, Facebook page until mm. today, but I'm sure the cyber troopers out there have already gotten nine of our Facebooks because yeah. we post things at the same time and yeah. uh, all of us are clear that uh, we are collective and whatever statement that we want to put, we will post it together through yep. all of our Facebook. You can yep. follow my Facebook, Taki's, yep. uh, Huda's and the rest. Okay, so that is the place to go yes. to get information. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you again for joining me uh, today and sharing your, your views. Uh, very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you uh, okay, much. I've been speaking to Ashik Ali Seti Alavi and also know Huda Ramli and Ahmad Taqyuddin Shaiman. They're all part of a group of young people that changed the conversation around the Rome Statute and ICC by exposing the position paper that went to the Council of Rulers. This has been uh, Let's Talk. I'm sure I'd cut it only on Astro Wani. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you.